Hi everybody, welcome back. In this video, we will discuss phase diagrams and I wanted to show you um, a video from the textbook we're using um, that gives a nice illustration of what phase diagrams look like and then we'll just cover some important aspects of what we learned from that video and work an example problem together. Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will look at phase diagrams. A phase diagram for a substance maps its physical state, that is solid, liquid, or gas, as a function of temperature and pressure. A typical phase diagram looks like this. The x-axis represents temperature and the y-axis represents pressure. As you might expect, the stable state at low temperature and high pressure is the solid state. The stable state at high temperature and low pressure is the gas state. And the stable state in between these two regions is the liquid state. Here is the phase diagram for water. Let's look at several of its features. The three major regions, solid, liquid, and gas, represent conditions in which that particular state is stable. For example, at 760 torr and negative 10 degrees Celsius, the solid state is a stable state for water. But at 760 torr and 110 degrees Celsius, the gas state is a stable state. Each line in a phase diagram represents conditions in which the two states on either side of the line coexist in equilibrium. The sublimation curve represents conditions under which the solid and the gas coexist. The vaporization curve represents conditions under which the liquid and the gas coexist. And the fusion curve represents conditions under which the solid and the liquid coexist. The triple point in a phase diagram represents the unique temperature and pressure at which all three states can coexist in equilibrium. The critical point represents a temperature and pressure above which a supercritical fluid exists. Now, you can use the phase diagram to predict what happens to the state of a substance when conditions change. For example, what happens to a block of ice initially at negative 25 degrees Celsius and 1.0 atmosphere when you heat it up at constant pressure? You can represent the initial conditions with a dot on the phase diagram. The dot is in the region for a solid, as you would expect for ice. As you heat up the ice, you move from left to right on the diagram. At zero degrees Celsius, you hit the fusion curve. There, the temperature stops rising and the ice melts into a liquid. Once all of the ice is melted, the temperature can continue to rise again until you reach 100 degrees Celsius. You have now reached the vaporization curve and the liquid water begins to boil. The temperature remains at 100 degrees until all of the liquid water has boiled away. When the water is all gaseous, the temperature can rise further. The phase diagram for carbon dioxide is shown here. The red line labeled A represents a change in pressure from 35 atmospheres to two atmospheres. What happens to the state of the carbon dioxide during this pressure change at constant temperature? Is it a, the state changes from solid to liquid. B, the state changes from solid to gas. C, the state changes from gas to liquid. Or D, the state changes from liquid to gas. All right, so hopefully you can look back um, and rewind, but based on that phase diagram, it goes from liquid to gas. All right, so let's come back to our notes here. And we learned from the video that each line or curve represents a set of temperatures and pressures at which the substance is in equilibrium between the two states on either side of the line. So let's look at the problem below and, and analyze this phase diagram for iodine. So if you're at this point of the diagram, are you a solid, liquid, or gas? Good, you're a solid. So I'm gonna write S for solid. What about this point here? Excellent, that's a liquid. And this point down here? It therefore have to be a gas, fantastic. So it's important when you get a phase diagram that you identify the solid, liquid, and gas, and it's in that order. In addition, it's also important to identify the types of curves. So when you're 
this curve here that's between the solid and gas is called the sublimation curve. And this curve here between the solid and liquid is the fusion curve. Think of fusion like melting, right? And between the liquid and gas is called the what? The vaporization curve, excellent. And that's gonna be important for us when we wanna identify the normal boiling point and the melting point for a substance. We gotta figure out um, where the pressure intersects, the fusion curve or vaporization curve. All right, um, in addition, we learned about the triple point that's located here on this phase diagram, and that's the point at which all three states are at equilibrium. And in addition, the critical point is located here on this phase diagram, and that's the highest temperature and pressure. At which a gas and liquid can coexist at equilibrium. All right. So phase diagrams have so much information um, in terms of identifying the state of matter the substance is in um, depending on the pressure and temperature of our condition. So it's very useful. Um, and so let's go ahead and some, answer some questions about iodine based on the phase diagram below. So what is the normal boiling point for iodine? I, when you hear normal, what do you think of? The pressure must be what? Excellent, one atmosphere, 760 torr. Now we're working in atmospheres here, so one atmosphere. And so what you want to do, if you think of boiling point, you want to intersect which curve? Sublimation, fusion, or vaporization? Excellent. You want to intersect the vaporization curve. So you're going to go at one atmosphere and say, oh, here we go. And then the temperature is 184.4 degrees Celsius. Fantastic. Now, the next question is asking us, well, what's the melting point for iodine at one atmosphere? So which curve are we going to intersect here? Yes, the fusion curve. So we're going to go here, intersect at one atmosphere, fusion curve, and go all the way down. That's 113.6 degrees Celsius. Now, the next question is asking us, which state is present at room temperature and normal atmospheric pressure? Room temperature is what degree Celsius? 25, fantastic. And atmospheric pressure at normal is one atmosphere. We just said that. So, if we look about, this is 113 here, and like, oh, maybe this is about 25 degrees Celsius and then intersecting one atmosphere, what state of matter are we in? We are a solid, very good. Now the last question is asking us, which state is present at 186 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere? So one atmosphere, and this is about 186, looks like it would be a gas, very good. All right, so that about sums up um, the phase diagrams and th these lecture videos covering solids, liquids, and intermolecular forces. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.